Thank you, sir. He can swallow and listen, baby. This is strictly a class date, so bring everything you got into it. Sure, honey, you know me. But save some of that sweet talk for in person, huh? A step on it while the night is young and you're still beautiful. All four of you. Bye now. The sucker's rope, they're ready to strip him. Put in a police call. And get Lieutenant Saunders out of the barber shop. All set? Hey, don't go to sleep on us now, Dreamboat. Mama won't want no deadhead. Hold the cards. Looks like he's had enough. Sorry, I feel quite up to myself. A little bit too much to drink, I guess. Game was tense for a while. I... There, a little rest, perhaps, before the romantic excitement begins. Yeah, 40 winks and you'll bounce back as good as new. Tough kid. Three slugs before I jump down. Okay, Monk. Get to work, huh? Right. Everything in perfect disorder. All fixed to the rude awakening. Don't he look natural? When it comes to, he won't even let a peep out for the cops. Ah, oh, the scandal of it all. Poor, poor fellow. His old lady will beat his brains in. Gentlemen, shall we blow? Oh, we blow. is going to ruin you, stupid. No. Reach. Back in the room with you. You connivers didn't rope a sucker. You hung yourself, just like I figured. Sleeping Beauty has your one-way ticket to the state pen. The working pairs got to be another one covering the elevators. You know that? I've had this identical problem before. Well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. The couch. The two of you go sit on the couch. Now raise your hands over your heads. Raise your hands. The, the chick's over. You're waiting for the pie wagon. You got it? Okay, just hold it like that. Okay, Junior, get your hands on the ceiling. No. Turn around. That's it. Keep them up, keep them up. Here, Monk. X marks the spot. Do I done it? Oh, come on, Lord Sheridan. All right, I did my bit. Remember, sir, I'm doing this under protest. Oh, my poor old friend. Put this 
back is like cutting off my right arm. Well, we'd be suckers to keep it. We'd wind up in the clink. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Department of St. Nicholas Arena. <laughs> well, thank you, Reverend. Good night, sir. Good night, night Reverend. Have a good time. Oh, Reverend. Yes? What time is curfew? The main event won't be over until after 11. Well, suppose we leave curfew to your individual and collective conscience. <laughs> right, Reverend. I'll bring a souvenir. Yes? A cauliflower ear. Oh. <laughs> good night, Reverend. Good night, boys. Lieutenant, uh... Lieutenant, Police Department. Well, I knew. Is there a way to get inside the church into the rectory? Yes. Into the basement. Well, why? There are three crooks down there. And trapped by the way it looks. Okay, my men, go down search. You may first remove your hat. Now, these three men, if I might ask their crime, there isn't time for a clam bake. Yes, but if three men are driven to seek the shelter of the church. I'm being detained in conference, men. Stay put. Okay. Okay, Reverend. You're an angry man, Lieutenant. And angry men are seldom responsible servants of justice. With all due respect to you, Reverend, save your Sunday talk for Sunday, huh? May I use the phone? Reverend Miles, our clothes. They came back from the cleaners and they were hanging up in the basement by the locker, but they've gone. 
The bag is down there, but the clothes are gone. Who could possibly have taken them? I don't know. Yeah, but she's on a fire escape. Well, of course it's her. We trailed as far as the church and got him trapped in the basement. Radio 21 to meet me in front. Tell car 17 to cover me in the back alley. Okay, read back what you got to me. Uh, you may distribute the hymnals, Walter. Hmm? Can the church business wait until I nab those three crooks in the basement? Uh, the basement is uh, through that door down the hall, down the stairs, up to the left. Thank you. Murphy! Three crooks. For miles. Long, huh? You better get your hat. Yes, your hat. this trouble for nothing, Reverend. I'm sorry I was a little edgy there. No matter. Uh, these three men, uh, what will you do now? Oh, I'll catch them sooner or later. Crooks always repeat themselves. Yeah, they'll pitch their tent someplace else. And when they do, guess where I'll be. Good night, Reverend. Good night, Lieutenant. Reverend Miles, why didn't you speak? I suppose because... Because the lieutenant was an angry man. But, but, but by my pants! Thieves wearing the cloth! Think what lies before them, Wilbur. They not only must escape from the police, but from the cloth, too. Say some special prayers, Wilbur. Now what? Police suits, we gotta peel them off. Oh, couldn't we wear them a little longer? Are you brownie? Why? Those cops tipped their heads. <laughs> it was a rare moment. Yeah, and Robin, that sucker was another rare moment. That cute idea of yours died with McKinley. We should have died with McKinley for falling for that two-bit bunker game of his. If it had our scheme materialized... Has that scheme of yours ever materialized? No, I'm, I'm afraid not. I suppose I've been unprofitable to you and to myself. Therefore, goodbye. Best of luck to you both. Matthew, come here. Sit down. What's the matter with you? See over there? When I was a kid, I used to jump off that dock every July and August. Until I beat it. Took a walk one night and lost the address. What about your age? Young punk. You know, we're an odd combination. What's it in for you, Benny? Kicks. You last, maybe? I never really lost that address. 222 Boyer Street. Joint where the cockroaches were so big you had to charge them rent like boarders. 
five years and all the places I've been, and here I am, back remembering the address. How long does it take a guy to get an amnesia? Who is she, Monk? She's 222 Blyer Street. Monk's back. Same dump, same Monk. Nothing's changed. Here we go again. Might have ducked in here, Sergeant. Let's have a look. Throw a beam. Okay, kids, come on out of there. Just a homeless bum. Yes. Yeah. It's Mr. Kovacs. Well, he's got a home to go to. Not one he stink of. Hand me the flashlight, Michael Boy. I think I'm having a nightmare. Don't tell me I'm seeing three ministers. Ministers it is. And lined up against the wall. Reverends, is it? Check. Yeah. You're no stranger to the cloth, Sergeant. I'm afraid I'm not. I'm a good man, even if I am a policeman. No doubt you're here now, your reverences, on some Christian errand. Of course. What other reason could there be? Uh, we, uh, we wanted to see the seamy side of life firsthand, don't you know? Sure, we figured to pitch salvation right here, where the devil hangs his hat. What better place, Sergeant? Well, hey, there's no better place. A change of clothes. Sometimes a change of wardrobe works miracles. Yeah, it delouses a guy. There, my good man, is a suit for you. Oh, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Don't go and rock it. I suppose we gotta crop up another suit. No, it's not a suit of clothes that this one needs. Good talking to instead. Here. Save him here when he's got a plane home for go to. Mr. Kovacs. Mr. Kovacs. That's uh, help he needs. He needs the Lord's guidance, not the end of a nightstick. Good night. I was wondering, do you mind taking him home, Reverend? Oh, not at all. Where does he live? Where does he live? 180 South Street. Come on. Let's go. Reverend. Reverend. Hey! You forgot his ukulele. Will you be here after I take the Boston Symphony home? Reverend. We'll be here, Reverend. Check, Rev. Swell. Come on, let's go. Oh, Sergeant. Uh, yes, Reverend. Uh, them police whistles and you are prowling around here. What's the rap? Oh, two thieving lads. They broke a jewelry store window. Did you see them by chance? Well, I... Oh, no, you're, you're no, the only no. guest we had all night. Oh, that's an endurance being a policeman on these streets. You reverends plan staying here tonight? Well, we thought perhaps we... Oh, uh, sure, you know, wrestling the devil is an all-night deal. Uh, then we leave you to your work. Night. There's an uncanny coincidence, your reverences. Uh, um, can it coincidence, Sergeant? Yes, for you to be rotting the devil in a fine old tabernacle. This is a fine old tabernacle? This was once a mission for all the derelicts around. There are all the old benches. Father Smith, peace to him, ran this place as a mission once before he passed on. It's an uncanny coincidence, your being here. Well, good night, your reverences. 
A mission. Soup and gospel. How about getting some shut eye until Benny gets back? Oh, excuse me. Reverend Benjamin. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. It was just the same with you, Reverences. I go it. Peace be with you. Buster, I'm in no mood, huh? I haven't been to church in 20 years. You should force yourself. Now, come on. I'm a musician. I will play for you some Mendel. Some other time, huh? Say, there's quite a joint for the neighborhood, huh? Like an institution. Concrete without a soul. They forgot how to plant trees. Come on, Buster. Or the suit goes out of style. Oh, this is it. I cannot go in. What's the matter? Are you afraid your daughter will give you what for? No. Linda will see nothing. Only her eyes. It's an unusual girl. Oh, My Linda. I wait for her. In culture, you wouldn't believe. She reads books. Tolstoy. Um, Rousseau. Dosto, dosto. Dosto, dosto. Yevsky, Yevsky. Yevsky, Yevsky. Is this the right place? Right place. I told you, there are too many saxophones. Yes, Papa. Mm. Too many terrible saxophones. Terrible, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Papa. Good night. I know my father. Well, uh, what is it? Music. Too much bebop, too little berry tall. Oh, a well, long hair. <laughs> yes. When he works, it's a wedding party or a banquet. Everybody drinks. Mm. Papa drinks to drown out the saxophones. They drive him crazy. I suspect he drinks more than anybody. <laughs> Why play? Why eat? Yeah, that's right. Well, thanks for bringing him home. Reverend? Oh, no, Benny's the name. I'm, I'm not quite used to this yet. Benny's been my name a lot longer than uh, this get-up. Oh, you're uh, newly ordained. Yeah. Brand new. Say, uh, you're, a, you're, you're an artist, huh? An illustrator. Hmm. Nice. Thank you. You've got, um, you've got quite a talent. Thanks again. <laughs> Benny? Yeah, I guess it is getting late, isn't it? Well, good night. Good night, Reverend. 
Good night, big boy. Reverend Niles, uh, if I may speak. The tongue wasn't meant to wag like a tail. Very well, Wilbur, speak. Thank you. This, uh, this sudden idea to lose our sleep after having gone to bed, to, to wander through the streets. To look for three men in a city of eight million. By elementary arithmetic alone. When elementary arithmetic fails, we must take up another yardstick. Hmm? Elementary faith, my son. Reverend Miles. Yes, Wilbur? I thought it over about uh, taking up another yardstick. And, Wilbur? I've tried to, but I cannot. I only keep thinking of the mathematical impossibility of finding three men in a, in a city of eight million. In that case, Wilbur, you must find a fourth man. A fourth man? Who? Yourself. You must first find yourself. Four men in a city of eight million. That does make the arithmetic more promising. The top of the morning to you, your reverences. It's seven o'clock, your reverences. Practically the middle of the day. Good morning. Ah, it's a toughish thing when your reverences turn away from your fine houses of worship to run this old mission. Hey, sorry. Okay. Aren't you jumping at conclusions? Or forcing him, maybe? Oh, no. I'm only a humble volunteer in the Grand Army of the Lord. Faith, if there's good work to be done, Monaghan can do no less than roll up his sleeve. <whistles> we were talking it over down to the station now. Faith was regular revival meeting we held down at the station house. And all of us worrying, Your Reverences, about the size of your undertaking. Uh, the size of our undertaking? Bad enough, we told ourselves. Bad enough that you should struggle with the human souls that'll come before you. But to struggle with all the filth and the discomfort, too. Ah, uh, that, we told ourselves, was too much, even for the strong souls that you are. So? So, Sergeant? We passed the word along. You, you, you what? You pass the word along to everyone with a drop of caneness in their blood. Let's get out of here. Yeah, but how? Come on in, all of you! off of the street and into this old mission. Right, Sergeant. It's off the streets with them, and good riddance. Mrs. Fogarty has a very warm desire. So, as you see, Your Reverences, you're not alone in your undertaking. No, we're surrounded. Say, Sergeant, this idea of yours about our uh, sort of staying around here and making a career of bums, I mean, uh, running this mission, 
Was it just an idea, or were you uh, sort of planning to make up our minds for us? Well, now, to tell you the truth, I was hoping that you were thinking like that. Oh, you were? I was burning to see a miracle of prophecy come to pass. A miracle of prophecy? Father Smith, peace to him, predicted that this old mission would one day raise itself from the dust. He stood right there. Oh, excuse me. Stood right there when he predicted that in the Lord's good time, some others would come along to take up his work. Uh, that's us. That's you. That's these ears of mine heard Father Smith. And in your reverences, these eyes of mine have seen his words come true. Sergeant, you're overlooking one thing. It takes Gitas to run a mission. The long green, dead presidents. Oh, you mean Spondoli? Yeah. The gospel's free, but the soup ain't. Yeah, that's right, Sergeant. You're a little shy of cash. In these circumstances, no funds are provided for us in this great undertaking. So you better call up Mrs. Fogarty before she gets housemaid's name. Oh, the money would be no hindrance. McAvoy, open up the briefcase. We passed the hat down at the station house. Faith was thrown broke to a man now under payday. And the whole neighborhood will open up their hearts and their purses to you for the great work that you contemplate. Come with me. are open. Praise the Lord. The Clover Street Mission. Well, your reverences, and the army rounds. Come on, let's blow. What are we going to do about this? Take this scratch and scratch. I'm with Monk on that. That cop's playing us for chumps. You don't think the sergeant's on the level. Huh. Are you kidding? Well, what's his angle? Look, we're not waiting to find out. Come on. Do you have to be coaxed? What's the percentage in staying? It might be profitable. Huh? Here we go again. This phony prophet's talking about phony prophets again. You've got another reason for wanting to stay, haven't you, Matthew? He tipped his cap to me. A sergeant of the police tipped his cap to me. Not he is a fruitcake. And that's your project. Among other things. Uh, do you pass this way every day? I have to, to go to work. Then it's my project. You are new to the clothes. a bum. Too many eyes staring at him. Nice people in their Sunday best. If you can't bring the men to the gospel, bring the gospel to the men. God is everywhere you find him. Did I just say something? Yes, surprise. Yeah, surprise I remember. Yeah, I heard it on an island once. Someone had just caught a bullet and someone else was yelling for a priest. No priest. That's when someone said God is everywhere you find him. Yeah, that's right. Is that what you're traveling on? No, uh, this is what I'm traveling in.
Well, food first. Why not? First gospel. On an empty stomach. The only thing holding them here is their stomachs. Feed these characters first and I'll lamb out of here but fast. Well, well I suppose a sermon first. Hold off on the eat until the reverend here gives him a piece of his mind. Okay. Shoot. Rip into him. What shall I say? Search me. Say anything that comes into your head. And the hotter the better. Nothing comes into my head. Suppose you. No, no. If I said what's in my head, it'd be murder. Oh. Reverend Benny? Not me. Oh, well, I suppose. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, gentlemen and... Uh, uh, and gentlemen. Unaccustomed as I... No, I mean... Now that I look at you, I see your faces, an odd notion comes into my head. Yes. Did you know that it's later than you think? <laughs> A word to the wise. I... Uh, Don't throw on trees. Yeah, it is later than you think. Remember that. It's later than any of us think. You out there and us up here. Thank you, Reverend Monk. And that, I think, will be ample food. So, for thought. So, peace in your hat, you guys. Don't come around later saying you aren't picked off. Amen. Now for the challenge. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Line up here by the counter. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, hey, throw your weight around. I'll thrust you right out of the joint without even bothering to open the door. That was the shortest sermon I ever heard. Oh, listen. Why, is that? Unless we tell you, the less you have to forget. Now, mush. All right, keep it moving. That's right, thanks. All right. You're supposed to stand in line, you know. Uh, bars, just like home. What are we doing here, Monk? Time. We've got to bust out. Yeah. Oh, and disappoint all these good people? Look, compliments of Berkowitz's furniture stores. Huh. Good luck from the 21st precinct. Cops. Ah. Ye white elephant gifty shoppy. They finally got rid of it. Star Linen Company. How nice. Kids who hit out here last night. Big Joe, little Joe. Big sap and little sap. They had the stuff stashed away under a floorboard upstairs. Yeah, ain't kids that broke into the jewelry store? Big time. Oh, why don't you wring out your socks before you hang them up? Oh, why don't you quit thiefing, Monk? 
I followed those kids. You what? Where? To a fence, a fat slob of a Fagin. He kissed them off with six bits. Wet behind the ears, fresh out of diapers, kids. And they're already knocking off a job. How's that for you? Sad. We gotta get some sleep. Who can sleep? Why are you so hopped up about those two kids? I... I got a... I got a... Feeling for kids, kind of. Bonk has two boys of his own, you know. Had once upon a time. These two could be mine for all I know. The ages fit. From the way they're behaving. I know they are. Oh, Monk. Try and get some sleep. Serve yourself some coffee. I got it. Hello. There is some sauerkraut. I made it for your reverences. Well, it's good of you to think of us, Mrs. Sheehan. A fine, upstanding job. And I'm the one who writes your superiors my words of praise. Uh, they can't do something, but it, it wouldn't be proper. No, it would not be, I suppose. Ah, uh, but you find these recommend themselves to the Lord. And only to Him. You're a humble man, Reverend Matthew. Oh, not at all, Pastor. Hi. Have you gone nuts? I'm going out. Like a light, you mean? All Monaghan has to do is get a load of you in that outfit and we're dead. Ah, uh, Monaghan won't see me. I'm going out that way. Say, Mark, you want to do me a favor? Get a cab, have him wait at the back door, will you? Who is it? The Kovac chick? What makes that pigeon so special? She draws pictures. Now, will you go get the cab? Listen, you're fooling around with respectable merchandise. What are you going to tell her about Benny? The usual. One eye right after another. Lay it two to one you down. Don't. don't what? Lie about Benny. Not the way she's got you hitting the time. Oh, come on, funny man. Do me a favor. Go get that cab, will you? All right, Romeo. Your louse is so alive. <laughs> where you're going. It's an accident, I'm sorry. This has been walking clumsily. Hey, aren't you that minister? Yes, I am. My, uh, my frock's at the cleaners. An emergency brought me here, a very sick woman upstairs. Poor soul. In the emergency, I, uh, had to borrow this suit. It certainly fits you well for a borrowed suit. Does it really? Say, friend, would you know where the nearest drugstore is? It's around the corner, two blocks. Oh, well, maybe you can do me a favor. What's that? Could you, uh, could you change a bill? 
Well, well, they'll change it at the pharmacy. Well, twenty dollars is all poor Mrs. Stevenson had. Such a large bill. Okay, sure. Something wrong? I, I want it. I, I haven't got it. You haven't? No. It's funny. I could have sworn I. It's home. I left it home on the bureau. Can you tie that? What happened? Well, I'm no good without my wallet. Well, say, friend, if I can be of any help. No, no thanks. Oh, hello. Fancy meeting you here. It's a small world, Reverend. Yes, isn't it? You going out? I had a date. Oh, oh. well, he had to go. He forgot something. Yes. You saw? You have uh, nimble fingers, Reverend. I uh, have? Hmm. You mean uh, this? I mean that. Here. Give it to him the next time you see him. You picked Walter's pocket very uh, expertly. Yes, well, you see. A professional taught me that trick once. It was in Omaha, I think. Yes, yes, if I remember right, it was in Omaha. I was uh, sort of telling him the error of his ways, you know, sort of uh, reforming him. So you uh, sort of uh, picked up his trade? Yes. Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, it helps, you know. It, it always helps. If you get down to a man's level, uh, uh, you win his confidence. Well, now that we got that settled, how do I look, huh? Oh, fair. Well, thanks a lot. Well, what are we waiting for? Oh, come on. One day for Benny, huh? An operatic star. I wanted to be a great... Operatic star. Mm. Mr. Sabatini taught me every Friday from six to eight. Two dollars an hour. Two dollars an hour. I, I was going to be another Lily Pond. Mr. Sabatini took an oath on it. Because well, Mr. Sabatini. I even had a debut. Oh, but you packed him in. Relatives and friends. We had six hundred seats and we sold forty. Poor Papa. All his savings. One skinny notice in the Times. Skinny? Oh. My career was over. <laughs> Am I boring you? Maybe I'm fascinated. Mm. What came next? The dance. Debut? Mm. Audition. Billy Green. Billy Green? Producer. Oh. Musical review. Oh, I bet you were hired on the spot. Mm. Fired on the spot. Oh, no. Now, I'm just Linda Kovacs, illustrator. Well, what about tomorrow? Um, Linda... Uh, housewife. Oh, no. Don't wish that on yourself. But I do wish that on myself. Oh, honey, you get stuck with a broom and you're permanently dead. Oh, no. Alive. Permanently alive. Oh, no. You're sure pretty. But you talk too much. All right. You say something. What do you want me to say? June, moon. Gee, aren't the stars like diamond bugs tonight, Mamie? Isn't this our war? Is that what you want me to say? What are you afraid of, Benny? Come again. Afraid of. Old age. The atom bomb. Also inquisitive dames. Who are you, Benny? That's quite a question. Do you uh, always get serious at a time like this? What better time is this? You saw the frock, didn't you? Not the frock, the man. One date and you're already getting kids dressed for school. Yes. Kids need help getting dressed. Look, Linda. Look, supposing the man is a phony. Do you still want to hear the story? Everybody's a little phony. Thanks. Okay. Not the frock. 
a man. I had a choice as a kid. Graduate from a public high school or get my diploma at the Empire Pool Room. Later, I had another choice. The infantry or the Marines. After that, I had a third choice. Take a job and stay put. Or pull a job and drift. Outside of a slight postscript at the end of the string. The postscript, Benny. I didn't stay put. And the uh, frock? Ask any cop. Tears. What for? For so this kid who got his diploma in the Empire pool. Oh. Thanks for the tears and all that, but confessions are over, huh? What now? Let's get married. What? Let's get married. What for? The normal reasons. To my kind of a guy? What's in it for you? A husband. What, are they scarce around Very here? Very scarce. Look, sister, I thought it was a fast worker, but you beat my time a mile. Be good. Where are you going? On the land. You can't hang that long a rap on me. Not for just one date. said was, let's get married. What'd you say? I'll give you one guess. You did yourself a favor. This way you ain't got nobody to worry about. This way you never do back nowhere. After midnight, how much longer? Not much longer now. Not much longer. Is there something I should know but do not? Wilbur, there is a great deal you should know but do not. Well, why are we stopping here? If I'm to share this, this nightly ordeal, I do think I should share your thoughts, too. You gibber too much, my son. Come now. Sergeant. Good evening, Reverend. Well, don't you mean good morning, Sergeant? Good morning, it practically is. And you, Reverend, still roaming about? Why, yes. There's a new mission in your precinct on Clover Street. Uh, not a new one. Father Smith, peace to him, it's his old mission, reopened, glory be. And doing a job that's long been wanted. Doing a good job, Sergeant? The best. Were well, you the one to doubt it? Not after hearing your reassuring testimony. If you'll give this to the good shepherds who are attending Father Smith's restored mission. Bible! For Sunday services. From an anonymous well-wisher. Now mind you, Sergeant. From an anonymous well-wisher. Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning, Reverend. Come with us. Look almost like human beings today. They are human beings. 
Dead bones? Yes. How about you doing here with a bull fiddle? I've come to explain myself. I haven't been to church in 20 years, but I've never lost God. A man plays in here, in his own cathedral, do you understand? Indeed I do. For 20 years I've played in my own way. Beethoven, Mozart, fine music, Reverend is a good player too. But today I'm tired of praying alone, only for myself. Today I like to, to bring my music to church. And you came here. If I'm welcome. If my music is wanted. Oh, it is indeed. I've come to the right place. And he chose this mission. You want to know something? You've been selling this religion for a week, and you're your own best customer. Where's Benny? I'll get him. But I don't think the Reverend Benjamin is with us no more. Oh. Spiritually, that is. This Bible, somebody gave Monaghan for us. Have you figured out who that somebody is yet? Simple act of kindness by someone anonymous. Why question it? A simple act of disaster, you mean? I'll go get him. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Let there be a settlement in the midst of the waters. Hey, Benny. You want it out there. It's Sunday. Followed by Monday, then comes Tuesday. So what? But the old man's reading the... Tell him he'll get eye strain from the small print. Well, turn off full house. Even Kovacs is here with his fiddle. All right, so what do you want from me? Well, they got all shaved. Even got their hairs combed. I once read somewhere that a heathen is only a guy trying to sneak into church the back way. Too mythological for me. <laughs> All right, monk. We'll give you a bums a big finish. Come on. You know, it's the last day of church. Next stop, Shemokin. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God had created and made. Oh. We will now pass the hymn books. So 
that fellas like you could get close to the blue when the devil is paying a call. I got no mansion, got no king. I'm at home neath the bright blue sky. Don't believe in worrying, cause I got faith that the sun will Nothing. Really, have nothing. 
You don't understand, Pastor? I'm afraid I don't understand. I don't understand either. Now wait. Why not give this to your sister? But to entrust me with... with so much money. Great, Mary. You change the furniture around, huh? Aren't you going to say something, Mary? Where have you been? Around Chicago, San Francisco, Georgia. How was Georgia? Hot. In the summer. You wouldn't like Georgia, not the way you not the good stand the heat. Um, you tie up with somebody, Mary? Well, they blind with your looks. There were too many of us for somebody. There were too many of us for you, too. I got a kettle of tea on the stove. Yeah, tea'd be good. Guess a guy gets old without a dame around. 
You get old, sit in the pickle jar. Starting tomorrow, I'm pushing a hack again for a guy named Fisher. He's already lectured me about riding with a flag up. Same old Fisher, same old monk. Nothing's changed. The kids? Mary's telling them about me, preparing them. They figure they hate me like poison. You'll win them, okay? I'm throwing punches at them. Best I can get is, is to get them straightened out. How many times do I have to tell you, ring your mouth, face? Oh, why don't you leave him alone? What are you so chipper about? Oh, yeah. Say, Matthew, you know, from tomorrow on, you'll be on your own. Monk's got his hack. Me, I'm, I'm drifting. Made any plans? Oh. Rio? I might spin down to Rio. Might spin down to Rio? Hmm. Uh, Bermuda? White sands. Very attractive. White sands. If you have to dream, dream with your mouth shut. I gotta get down to the hack bureau early. Benny. Monk. I'll meet you in Bermuda. has much merit. Gentlemen, I yield to your wisdom. In that case, won't you unpack? Unpack? Your suitcase. Is there any reason why not? No, but I don't understand. Do you know of any better atonement than running this mission? But me, a, a fraud? I've never known a fraud to read the Bible. Out loud, to 50... I'm, I'm not the man you take me for. I, only yesterday, the temptation to steal this, this contribution. Who of us is above temptation? You'd not be without supervision, what with me at the back door and his reverence at the front door, and with Reverend Monk under the eye of the hack bureau of the police. He'll not be without supervision either. You're a busy man, aren't you, Sergeant Muller? I'm a very busy man. Mm-hmm. I've no idea. I'm only a humble sergeant at the police. Befriending the Lord, and also befriending the taxpayer, too. Man of your diligence would doubtless know where Benny is. A man of my diligence does. Your Reverend. Your Reverend. I'm finished. Say 
what you came to say. I was a mile across town at the bus depot, and the bus left one passenger shy. But I just couldn't take off without... Well, not without... Not without what, Betty? Not without... Saying goodbye? Yeah, goodbye. You read a goodbye. Thanks. Oh, listen, I didn't mean it that way. But I've never said goodbye before to anyone, anytime, anyplace. What did you do before? I just took off. I fell in love with a locomotive at the age of 14. Linda, can't you see it's no good? You're way out of my league. What you want is a, what you want is a nice guy who, who earns an honest buck and, and, and makes with a lawnmower on Sundays. I couldn't be that guy. My life's against it. What guy are you? I'm a guy on the move, on a boat, a plane, a train. You never have a man all your own. All you'd ever get from me is a picture postcard that says, having a wonderful time, wish you were here. Now you see why it's no good? No. No? No. What do you mean, no? What do you Marry want? Marry me, Benny? Are you nuts? Mm. Now look, look. I came to say goodbye, you see? And that's what I'm going to say, and I'm saying it right now. Goodbye. <laughs> Linda! Linda, wait a minute. Oh, you're not going to get that stubborn. Mm -hmm. You didn't. As an American citizen, I have a perfect right to go where I please, when I please. Now, give me that key. No! Look, I also have a right to be a bachelor, as long as I want to. Now, give me that key. No! I can get married if I want to as an American citizen. All right, swell, great, wonderful, but not to me. And furthermore, as an American citizen, I have a right to have children. I don't care if you have 20. No! As many as I want to. Look. And you can't stop oh, me. You're the same I've ever met in my whole life. Oh. You pushed me. Benny.